Uh, we're excited to take you around to uh, one of our latest projects uh, here in beautiful the Beauvoir Town conservation area today. And today we'll be covering a project of ours called uh, Vault House. And the exact the reason why we've given it that name, we hope to explain that later in, on in the video itself. So it is a end of terrace um, property with three bedrooms and a typical outrig at the back onto a beautiful garden. So yes. Do you want to talk a bit about how the existing house and how you found it? Yeah, before we go in, we thought we'd just cover the, what the existing house was like before we started work. Um, also talk about what the brief was from the clients for this house and then what some of the challenges and some of the opportunities were in terms of achieving that mm -hmm. brief. So as Ewald said, it's a beautiful property and beautiful area, um, but there are a few things that weren't quite living up to the potential um, at mm -hmm. the property. One of the challenges, I think, was that the back of the house, they before we started work, they had a narrow kind of kitchen outrigger, plus next to it, a narrow conservatory. So two narrow, small spaces onto the back of the house. That we needed to open up and yeah. improve that connection with the existing garden. They definitely then also struggled with storage space. I mean, what house doesn't? Yes. Um, but they definitely did. There was, there was not enough space to store things, particularly um, in the kitchen. Um, but then one of the other interesting things is looking at the house from the outside, there's very grand and well-proportioned houses, but the entrance to the house was quite crammed when you first came mm -hmm. in. You faced a downstairs toilet. That was your first welcome into the house. Yes. Um, so that definitely needed addressing. There was also a bit of a bottleneck of activity. As soon as you walked in, you got confronted with the staircase and the toilet and everything had to go through to then breathe again at the, at the back into the existing kitchen and lounge. So we needed to resolve that. Um, but the brief from the clients was, was actually very simple and could be boiled down to three key things that they mm -hmm. wanted from the house. One was they wanted a big open kitchen dining space on the back of the house. The second one was they wanted that entrance addressing, they wanted it to feel more spacious and remove this bottleneck element. Mm -hmm. But then in addition to that, they also wanted a bit more space upstairs and wanted us to look into ideas for adding an extra room that could be used as a study or yeah. a bedroom. So finally, um, because we're in a conservation area, we had to kind of, we couldn't necessarily go all out in terms of volume. We had to keep it relatively incognito, but at the same time being end of terrace, there was this opportunity where we could bolt on a certain volume, which is what you can see right behind us here. And this volume, particularly here, the two story element, that was the key to unlocking that bottleneck point, the entry itself, where then this volume was taking in up the new staircase on two stories, Sp freeing up the space inside on the right, the main bulk, the existing bulk of the house. So our approach, our sort of overall approach to the design on this house is respecting and keeping this main rectangular block of the main building. Mm -hmm. And then we added three new volumes mm -hmm. around the side and the back of the house, all stepped at different heights. And as we go inside and when we go through to the back of the house, we'll show you how all those spaces evolve and, and create this, this beautiful, beautiful house. Yes. So we go in? Yep, let's go in. We'll take you inside. Talking you through the existing plan, as soon as you walk through the door, you are greeted by a small toilet, staircase to go up, and a narrow corridor to get through to the kitchen and dining at the back. A large lounge was located at the front of the house. The only connection point between kitchen and dining was one small door. Both spaces were long and narrow and needed to be resolved. The solution uh, to this problem was to remove a large section of the uh, side wall, remove the two existing extensions of the kitchen and dining, inserting a new set of stairs in a new double storey volume with the kitchen behind, we created a utility and service area both underneath the new staircase as well as across from it, calling it the uh, utility corridor. At the back, a new kitchen was created around a central island in a galley layout with plenty of practical units around. Across from that new kitchen, a dining area was created with its own set of cabinets. Both areas received a new access to the garden, a single and a double door. 
above the dining table, two vaulted signature roof lights were inserted, providing plenty of daylight. Three distinctive open plan layouts were created, utility, kitchen, dining, both having very good access from the front as well as access to the garden. So here we are in the entrance to the house, in fact the new entrance to the house that, that we've designed and there are three key things that we've done to this space to, to transform it and change it. Um, the first main big move that we've done is we extended to the side of the house with a two-storey extension. So above me now I've got this beautiful double height space. By moving out to the side and creating this two-storey extension that, is, that allowed us to do one other key move. So the stairs that you can see here used to run up here where I'm standing and used to dog leg up into the house. By moving this extension out to the side it allowed us to pull the stairs over to one side of the house. So when you come into the entrance you face the stairs and you can go straight up and round and over this new corridor that we've created. And then the other, the, the, well the last, the third key thing that we've done in this space is then with all these moves, moving the stair over and creating this extension, we've removed a huge section of the existing side wall of the house. And what that does is it opens up, it opens up the whole kind of bones of the house. So as you go up the stairs and you're on the first floor and you're on the second floor, on the landings you can look down into this really beautiful new space. So those three kind of key, key changes to the space have created a lot more volume and a lot more dynamism to the space, let's say. Then what we've done is we've, with this, in terms of a few of the sort of details that really kind of make this space work, one of them is um, we thought it'd be a really nice idea to express this double store extension and make it look different from the rest of the house. So we exposed the brickwork internally and painted it. And what that does is it's, it creates a really nice kind of interesting texture. So the light comes in from this new window that we've created that faces onto the back of the house and it reflects and bounces off this texture. The new roof that we've put onto the double height extension, we've exposed the structure of that roof. So you get a little bit of warmth and materiality. So there's timber, timber beams running across on the underside of the ceiling. But then I think one of the real key details that really makes this space sing is this swept handrail. So now we've got this lovely stair that is not like your kind of normal stair. It runs up, it sweeps round, goes over a bridge and spirals up the house. And the one thing that ties it all together is this incredible swept handrail that was handmade, um, particularly for this space. And it just goes all the way up the stairs. I'm just going to talk you through that in section. So here's the side of the house, so the entrance and the kitchen at the back. We removed the kitchen and then we removed a large portion of the side wall of the house and built this two storey extension with a new entrance window at the front. And then the stairs, the new stairs that go up to a mid landing and a window that looks out of the back. Off this mid landing, we've installed a new study at the back of the house. Then you go up some more steps to the first floor and above the entrance, we created a little walk-in wardrobe for the master bedroom. From the first floor landing, you can see down into the entrance and from the entrance, you can see up this triple height space and out the window at the back. At the back, we've got the kitchen extension, which is single storey with a new roof light set over the timber joists that support the room above. So light filters through. And all in all, it results in this dynamic space of landing, study, entrance, bedroom and kitchen. So where I am standing here, this is where the old staircase used to go up and creating that quite lo uh, low ceiling height bottleneck with way too much activity. There was a toilet that you were kind of greeted with straight away. And we opened that all up by relocating a new staircase in that double height extension and what that did was unlocking this new hallway behind me. This, this hallway itself, this is working really hard. This particular bit of let's say three to four meters long is working hard with all these kinds of functions and what that does is it liberates the rest of the house from these functions that you don't necessarily want to see. So first of all, as you walk through the door, you want to put your coat somewhere. So this is quite neatly tucked away in here. You've got coats here, you've got shoes at the shoes drawers at the bottom there. Going further in, remember that toilet was the first thing you saw here. This is now further into the plan, a bit further tucked in underneath the new staircase above me here, where we got a bit of, sort of, a, bit of a Moroccan vibe in here with the arch ceiling, quite strong mood lighting in here. So it's got a strong identity in itself, which you can then close off, of course, with that sliding door. On my other side, 
underneath this um, new staircase. It's quite compact and low. It's not always the most usable space in the house, but we've decided to put the boiler there because the side passage there it can uh, put out the actual pipe work quite easily. Coming further in, on my left, there is a, a washing machine. Something that is actually quite neat where it doesn't take up units in the kitchen. It saves that space itself. All the knickknacks of soaps and whatnot are right by that place. On my other side, there we got ourselves a drying rack where you can hang up some of the clothing if you wanted to dry naturally rather than with the uh, dryer. So that's the end of this work working corridor itself. And you can close this up with a sliding door so, so there is still that separation or, or flexibility to be able to separate that itself. If you come further in, then you get greeted by this. We got ourselves a, a kitchen that breathes very well coming out of that uh, hallway or corridor coming in here. This place is filled with light. We have ourselves a beautiful door window to walk towards, to be drawn to. Above me, there is a roof light as well that I can see the double uh, story extension with the new study created on top of this. Um, we have ourselves plenty of units around me. So where you are now, on your right, there is a high bank of units. Again, on your left, there is stacked um, ovens, worked up space, more worked up space on the kitchen island. And what I love about this is that we try, is we try to stay true to its structure. So above me there, I don't know if you can notice that fully, this green L shape is the steelwork that is holding up that double story extension or that study above us. And it, it's showing that it's, it's, it's quite honest. Um, same with the joist that I kept exposed. It obviously is a great aesthetic, but it also shows how the, the, new, the new building is held up. And then it, it frames that daylight very neatly. Uh, the, the light is dappling on the actual joist itself. So behind me, if I go further in towards the garden, in front of me is the fridge freezer, another larder next to that, and right behind me is another uh, larder where more, some more appliances are located. We're talking about a smoothie maker, we're talking about a coffee machine, and all the knickknacks that you don't necessarily want to see. And all of that is just freeing up the kitchen itself. You only have things out that you want to see, and obviously it celebrates the view of that dining area on the other side. So I'm going to take you through from the new entrance through here, which is the existing front through lounge of the house and out into the new dining space that we've designed. Um, and the first thing that was really important with this extension that we added at the back was the link from the old to the new. And what we did is we kept this traditional opening here, but we've actually quite sneakily, we've actually widened this opening, but you can't tell because this panel at the top, we created a new one. So it kind of extends the existing and we get more light. Just a really little practical thing before we go in is this, again, we've got pocket doors here so we can, we can close off this space. But in here, this space here, I'm lucky enough to get to show you around the bit which is where the name comes from for the house. So Vault, Vault House, um, was, this was the, the main overriding initial concept for the house is how can we extend this space? How can we bring light in and make it somewhere really kind of spectacular? And we loved the idea of two huge square roof lights over this dining space but to make them feel even bigger we've vaulted them and by that we mean we've sloped all the sides um, going up to the roof light so it's a really nice way of making these um, windows feel bigger but also it also does a, a quite a practical thing as well so again a challenge of putting a lot of glass on extension is is trying to avoid 
overheating and a really good way of doing that is building building depth almost kind of like baffles so these roof lights are actually quite high up and the sides are, are quite steep so they shield a lot of direct light coming in so other than the the roof lights in this space one of the key defining features is the material that we've used so we've used plywood here to line these vaults and that gives a really kind of nice warmth and texture to the space and we've taken that material down the side and on the party wall, so the neighbours are behind here. And all along this one side of the wall, we've built in storage, and that's enabled us to sort of do nice design where these surfaces kind of line through with the vaults perfectly, so it's all seamless. But we've also built in a really nice long dining bench. And little details in this dining bench, the, 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 the tops lift up, so the storage underneath, and really important detail if you're ever designing a dining bench, get that little slope in on the back so it's really nice and comfortable to sit in. But aside from those little details, it's the sort of overall picture of this space that really makes it sing. It contrasts a lot with the space that Ewald's taking you around with the exposed joists and the slightly lower ceiling in the kitchen, where it just feels beautiful. It feels really nice big space. You get a lot of view of sky, but you also get a really unique view from the dining space where as you look out, because of the way um, this house is located, you can look right out through trees and not see a single house from the dining space. Um, and the other thing that we've also got in this space, in terms of materiality, is using these, these crittle doors that contrast. They're quite sharp and, and they're black and contrast with the plywood that we've used on the bench and on the roof light. So I'm back here at the front door itself and then it would be good to actually talk you through what's happening upstairs and finally get up here and show you around. So as Ewald's going upstairs, let's just take a look at what we did on the first floor of the house. So here is the plan before we started the work with the bedroom at the front of the house and the bathroom at the back, both accessed off the stair. And we removed the ground floor extensions that we can see wrapping around the house. And first of all, we added the two storey extension onto the side, which gives the new entrance on the ground floor. But here for upstairs, it allows us to open up the stair and really kind of wrap it around this double or triple height space. We added this small study room onto the back that's kind of accessed off a mid landing from the stair. And then the stairs go up to the second floor of the house as well, giving a view over the entrance. The extension also allowed us to put in a nifty little walk-in wardrobe for the master bedroom. And then this is the view of the kitchen extension below and the two big square vaulted roof lights of the dining area. We also installed a little side swift box for a family of swifts that live in the house. So now I am in the point of new meeting old this is a new double story extension with that beautiful window that does let in heaps of light so as soon as you walk through that front door you can see the sky straight away you can see this triple height space that we've created here you see a diagonal view out into this new study uh, so it's a very pleasant way of being greeted uh, in the house so coming through into the new study it's not necessarily fitted out as a study just yet, but the view that you get is over the uh, ground floor extension, you see the garden obviously, and the foreground itself has got that beautiful um, roof light that washes in light or lets in light in the, in the kitchen. And the seeding roof is softening that view from this study out to the garden. The garden is kind of elevated or starts high up rather than having the typical kind of rubber membrane that you look out onto. It was an opportunity that we want to exploit by br bringing in that seed and roof or the planting. Coming back into the triple height space, this um, swept handrail is the kind of red line across the whole circulation space. It comes back on every level and it's got some very interesting, beautiful details that 
I mean, it's almost, almost impossible to imagine how this was created, but it's, it's incredible how they've done a great job on this. Again, if I wanted to look down, see who's coming through the front door, I can, just looking down. And on my left, there is a large family bathroom. And then now I'm coming through into the master uh, bedroom, bedroom on my, on my left. And on my right, this is a bit of a bonus space where this is the new double height extension created. And we were able to put a, a, a new window in there, just flooding that corner of the actual walk-in wardrobe with plenty of light, nice mirror at the end. So yes, a nice little niche or nook that we kind of made good use of. So um, I think that's it up here. There's quite a lot of dynamic views that are being created. I suppose the last thing I didn't cover is the materiality of the double height story extension is we've got the exposed brickwork that we've painted and then just like I was mentioning earlier in the kitchen staying true to form leaving the joists exposed and that is being consistently done with the ground floor as well as the first floor it's all quite neatly done the rear of the house we decided to remove the dining and kitchen extensions and added four new volumes to the house a double story extension on the side to house a new staircase a kitchen at the rear a study or spare bedroom on the first floor and a new dining area adjacent to the new kitchen both kitchen and dining area have their own access to the garden So now finally we get to show you what it looks like from the outside and hopefully it all starts coming it together a little bit. Yeah. Um, so here we can see now we're at the back of the property and we talked right at the beginning about this idea of putting these quite blocky volumes onto the back of the house. And to just give you a very quick summary of those, those volumes, there's, there's actually four. So right to the sort of back at the front there is this two story volume that's what we call the entrance volume that's on the side of the house. Mm -hmm. Up there we've got the the one story at the first floor volume that's got the study inside and then down here we've got these two pushing in and out blocks the the kitchen block here and the dining block here and to us it was really important that they felt this kind of solid weight to them they're quite sort of solid masses with then these these glass openings carved deep yeah. out of them on, on the back. Uh, it was a deliberate choice to go for brick as well to add to that massivity or solidity of, of the volumes. And because we were playing with volumes stepping in and out, I don't think a full width opening on one plane was suitable or was right for this uh, design uh, itself. So, which is why we then opted for two separate openings, one large than the other, and the one on your right is stepping out ever so slightly it gives that a little bit extra storage space for the kitchen as well as worked up space and it's it's a mini galley layout on the inside that is then ending with that beautiful door onto the onto the garden what was quite nice as well about playing with a material that's quite familiar to to the local surrounding and, and working mm. with the bricks is we could celebrate the kind of craftsmanship of working with brick as well and we enjoyed in quite subtle detailing but just to elevate these sort of solid blocks from the norm there's just some little sort of intricate things that we've done and if you could see behind us just above the openings there's this recessed detail that is is our kind of little nod to kind of historical details that you would have found on on georgian properties that mm -hmm. does does sort of miss sometimes from modern properties if you just have a window cut in but it just creates again this elegance of scale so above them the bricks recess just slightly back and they're just set on end with these soldier course that again is probably something you've heard us talk about before yes. but we do love those little kind of details that really help bring That's out right. the project so unless there's anything else that we should be covering still on the outside george 
Are you happy to wrap it up here? I think we can uh, we can wrap it up. Yeah. Yes. So well, thank you for um, from us to watch this video once again. Uh, if you wanted to find out more details about this particular project, go and check out our website. You've got the whole suite of photos, photos on there as well as the full backstory as well. Um, follow us on social media, uh, BVDS Architects on Instagram, as well as our YouTube channel where you find more of these videos. Anything else on your end? Um, no, done? thank you very much for watching. And should we go inside and enjoy the kitchen and have a coffee? That sounds great. Thanks very much. Thank bye you. bye.